Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial, Functional Analysis, Class Number Three. In this video, we learn holders inequality. Let us see the statement of holders inequality. Let x is equals to x1, x2, and so on, xn. Y is equals to y1, y2, and so on, yn. Denotes n tuples of scalars. N tuples of scalars. They may be either real or complex numbers. That scalars may be either real or complex numbers. And the norm defined like this. Norm x is equals to norm x over p is equals to summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi power p whole power 1 by p for all p greater than or equals to 1. For all p greater than or equals to 1. Then the holder's inequality can be written like this. Summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi yi less than or equals to norm x over p norm y over q. You can replace this q by p also. Okay. Now we prove this inequality. We will end the proof of this inequality. Suppose if x is equals to 0 or y is equals to 0. If any of the tuple is 0, if either x is equals to 0 or y is equals to 0, then the inequality then the inequality is trivially true, is simply true. There is nothing to prove. If any one of the vector either x is equals to 0 or either x is equals to 0 or y is equals to 0, one of the vector is 0, then obviously the inequality is true, there is nothing to prove. So, let us take x and y be non-zero vectors. Let us take x and y be non-zero vectors. Both are non-zero vectors. So, if any one of them is 0, then it is not equal, then the trivially, there is nothing to prove that inequality is trivially true. So, x is not equals to 0 and y is also not equals to 0. To prove the holder's inequality, to prove this holder's inequality, holder's inequality, we use the following lemma. We use one lemma. Lemma means it is a standard result. It is a standard result. That is, if a i greater than or equals to 0, comma b i greater than or equals to 0, then a i into b i is equals is less than or equals to a i power p by p plus b i power q by q. Let it be equation number 1. Where remember that, where remember that both P and Q, both P and Q real numbers and greater than 1, they satisfy one condition 1 by P plus 1 by Q is equals to 1. 1 by P plus 1 by Q is equals to 1. Remember that. So, to prove the holder's inequality, we use this standard result. Observe that if anyone needs this proof of this standard result, mention in the comments, then I can prove this result. I can make one more video to prove this inequality. So, in the same inequality, put ai is equals to mod xi by norm p and bi is equals to mod yi by norm yq. We replace in equation 1 ai by mod xi by norm xp, bi by mod yi by norm yq. In equation 1 we get. In equation 1 we get. Simply we get ai mod xi by norm xp to mod yi 
by norm yq is less than or equals to 1 by p mod xi by norm xp whole power p plus 1 by q mod yi by norm yq whole power q whole power q now the left side can be written like this simply mod xi yi divided by norm xp norm yq is less than or equals to so the the right side cannot be changed as it is we have 1 by p mod xi by norm xp power p here also power p plus 1 by q mod yi power q by norm y q power q that's it now taking summation on both sides taking summation over i is equals to 1 to n on both sides in the left and right sides if we take summation over i is equals to 1 to n then the same inequality becomes summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi yi divided by norm xp norm yq less than or equals to 1 by p summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi power p by norm xp power p plus in a similar manner you can write 1 by q summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod yi power q divided by norm yq power q by the definition of norm the left side is as it is you have so same you have in the left side summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi yi divided by norm x norm y according to p and q which is less than or equals to 1 by p by applying the definition of norm here in the statement we have here it is the definition of norm let us see norm xp is equals to summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi power p whole power 1 by p if you shift this whole power 1 by p into left side norm x power p you simply this norm can be written like this norm xp power p is equals to summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi power p mod xi power p we use this result in our derivation part here we use the same result in our derivation part here so that can be written as that can be written as norm x power p divided by norm x power p plus 1 by q norm y power q divided by norm y power q so according to the same you know, definition of the norm definition of the norm you observe that the numerator and the denominator are same in both the steps here and here the numerator and denominator are same so they get cancelled and you get one so that left side completely takes the form summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi yi divided by norm xp into norm yq is less than or equals to 1 by p plus 1 by q in the lemma we assume that 1 by p plus 1 by q is equals to 1 so we assume that 1 by p plus 1 by q is equals to 1 so by using that result this must be equivalent to 1 it means it means summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi yi divided by norm xp norm yq is less than or equals to 1 now shift the denominator into right side 1 into that term is you get the norm summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod xi yi is less than or equals to 
norm xp into norm yq that's it this is the required statement of the holders inequality which is required which is the required result that's it so one of the important inequality which is very useful to prove different theorems in functional analysis if you take here if you take the value of p and the value of q is equals to 2 if you take the value of p and q is equals to 2 then obviously this inequality becomes summation over i is equals to 1 to n summation over i is equals to 1 to n mod x i y i mod x i y i is less than or equals to norm x to norm y to which is known as Cauchy inequality which is known as Cauchy's inequality so if you take p value and q value is equivalent to the number 2 then holders inequality becomes Cauchy's inequality so after that so you can apply the holders inequality for non negative real valued functions also so holders inequality can be applied holders inequality holders inequality can be applied can be applied for non negative real functions also non negative real functions non negative real valued functions real valued functions like this suppose f comma g both are non negative real valued functions defined over a closed interval a comma b this f and g are non negative real valued functions defined over the closed interval a comma b then the holders inequality can be written like this integral a to b mod f of x into g of x is dx less than or equals to integral a to b mod f of x power p mod f of x power p dx whole power 1 by p into whole power 1 by p into you can write g of x also integral a to b mod g of x power p or you can write q also dx whole power 1 by q that's it so holders inequality can be applied for non negative real valued functions also in the holders inequality same if you replace p and q by a real number 2 then you get the cauchy swarges inequality or cauchy's inequality so this completes the this is the complete information of holders inequality in the next class we will learn about minkowski's inequality that's it keep learning